Welcome and welcome to an episode where I try to convince you to try a new add-on out. Today we'll be looking at no other than the exceptional auto category by Rocking Dice. What this does is basically an add-on that allows you to categorize your inventory any which way that you want by using custom predefined rules um, well, either or, either the predefined rules that come with it if you're not looking to set things up manually or custom rules that you can basically write on the fly using basically hundreds of various types as well as APIs that are constantly being added. In fact, um, I think Rocking Dice may or may not have grown tired of my constant requests and questions to his add-on, but this basically gives you an idea of how active the development is. Any issues or problems or requests have been handled in an extremely fast manner. Uh, but let's actually move on to it. So generally, when you're playing the game, is this not what you would look at if you had an inventory or boatload full of items? You would generally have items all over the place and obviously I'm already using Filter It, which allows me to filter by different uh, item categories specifically. But generally, this would be your overview. You, know? you would have items sorted alphabetically, and while you can sort by armor rating and value, that isn't much help. You would go to your materials. Okay, I don't have much here. You would have your consumables. Yes, mind the event skulls. And your weapons. But the main issue is you wouldn't necessarily know what to do with them at a glance. You could go through and realize, okay, this is a really low level CP item, I'm going to deconstruct this, or perhaps I'm going to save this and sell it, but it's already bound. What if I told you that at the push of a button, I can reactivate all of my rules, and this transforms into this? So basically, we have a rule that's categorized that shows us the items that should be deconstructed because they're intricate we have a standard category deconstruct and most of these bear in mind are custom rules that I've had to go and tweak because the base ones didn't serve my purposes perhaps due to OCD tendencies but this is showcasing the power of the add-on obviously the add-on is there what you choose to do with it is completely up to you I've set it up so that I can have items at a glance shown as deconstructable researchable or anything else that doesn't match. As for armor items, again, deconstructable, sell to guild store based on whatever custom rules which I'll go through with you now, sell to vendor because they're absolutely pointless and serve no purpose and they're also bound and we can't trade them. Um, then again, deconstruct, researchable, and then sets which is really awesome. There's the ability to actually have auto sets which will create categories based on the different sets that you have. So at a glance, if you had several items, you could just be like, aha, the set Troll King, um, this is what I have. Obviously, I don't have many sets currently. I've just recently hit uh, CP160 myself, and this was more than ever crucial. Um, you'll see all of these I've specified to have light armor and then categorized by set, where the rest I've grouped together. So heavy armor sets, all of these are heavy armors, but there are sets in one because I don't want them separated because I generally won't be using heavy and medium armor, but it's still nice to have grouped up. Uh, for example, consumables. I'll give you a quick rundown of how this works now. So let's say, for example, these potions. We wanted them in their own category so that we can group them and see them neatly. Um, what you'll do is you'll go to your settings menu you would go to your add-ons, you would find auto category, and what you could do is, I'll run you through the process of even adding a new category. So, what you would do is go to your category setting for whichever one exists at the time. Doesn't matter which one, just go to your category settings and then go to new. And what you're going to do is give it a name. So we can call this, oops, got caps locks on, we can call this potions and tag is what is going to be categorized under. You can see it kind of as a hierarchy. Your potions would fall under 
this heading and everything else would fall under it as well. So let's go ahead and call this my new category. Okay. So we give this a description and here is where the magic comes in. So if we wanted to group all potions, it would be as simple as going type potions. Literally as simple as that. Now that we've created that, you'll see the tag has changed to my new category and potions belongs under my new category. Now if we go back right at the top under bag settings, generally you would be under backpack, but you can also export to all bags. So the currently selected bag, certain rules only apply to certain bags, but if you're generally editing like I am just in the backpack, every so often you can just export to all bags and that will export these settings to every other bag and what that means is these rules can be individually um, changed per role so you could have certain rules just for your backpack certain rules for the bank guild bank craft bank and craft station and so on uh, I personally find I like to have all the same rules but you know some of you may like different rules for different views so that's obviously why you have that option there so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna select our new category our tag my new category and you'll see automatically any items in that category that's not already part of the bag categories will show up here so if I for example go and make another one now um, we go again new and as long as this is part of my new category it will show up under there and we can call this one um, just trying to think what I have think so I'm just gonna have to have a look quickly what can we put this under so we can just like type drink all right so I only have one drink item but that's good enough so we're gonna call this one drinks all drink related items in one easy to find place and same again we'll go type drink and now some of you may be thinking well hmm how am I ever going to remember this how will I know and that's exactly why the rules index was created it's basically a wiki of sorts that contains every single value that you can use to create your own rules for example the one we're matching currently is the type and you'll notice there's many types part of which drink is there um, potion is there as well and the rest Oh yeah, as well, if that's not enough, you can also do specialized item types. Um, they'll match specific types. You can do equipment type as well. If you wanted specific item types, you can um, also filter it based on what the inventory would filter it as. You can specify under trait types, trait strings, the bound type, like literally every possible scenario you could think of. Um, obviously, if there are some that aren't added you can obviously request them as I have and uh, new, new APIs get added as recently um, what was it that I had requested that wasn't there I believe it was the sell price that was good to know if certain items have a certain sell price or if there's a specific quality you wanted to know uh, that you can filter by and most recently the get quality so that you can actually use um, operators and expressions to say if uh, item quality is less than or greater than um, that's obviously really helpful so everything that you need to know to build your rules so is in this wiki and it is on the auto categories um, page if you just go to the add-on info and scroll down there's a link to the auto categories wiki right there um, so let's get into that as I was saying we created the new drinks one as part of my new category and as I was saying any items under your categories that aren't added to the main bag will show up under there as you can see potions drinks now this will do nothing currently for this to actually work we need to add them so once you've selected that category and you've selected the relevant item click add add again and now you'll see them here except there's quality uh, sorry there's um, what's the word I'm thinking of uh, priorities right so you'll notice that these are at a hundred currently what that means is it will take precedence over anything else that may have a match on those items. For example, we have consumables down here that would generally match potions and drinks, but that's only at a 35 priority. 
whereas our new drinks and potions are at 100, meaning it will display above anything else and take priority over all other things. So that should be good to go if we check our inventory now. And just, you generally have to switch tabs and just go back and as you'll see, drinks are up here. Clarified wine and the witch mother's bird and brew are right at the top. Both of them classified as drinks. As for our potions, um, I have a feeling I said potions instead of potion. It is case sensitive uh, and you just want to keep in mind if things like that don't end up working. All you'll do is go through the items in the back, find it, um, in this case potions, click edit, it takes you to the rule and there you go. It should be potion instead of potions. Um, and then you can just literally escape, there's no need to save, it automatically saves. Just switch a tab again and there you go, drinks, potions. Now if you want to drinks to appear below potions, you'll just set the priority lower. So in that case we'll go to settings, add-ons, go to drinks, oh uh, sorry, bag settings, go to drinks and set the priority to example um, 99. And that would set it directly under potions, just like that. So it's extremely powerful as you can imagine. I'll give you an example for the deconstruction. I'll actually take you through to one of my guilds. And you'll be able to see here all of these marked to sell to vendor. Completely useless. Um, and I wasn't even aware, it's just one of those types where you just chuck everything into your bank and then you actually think, what is this really good for? Um, same with items like this. At some point they were probably really useful, but if you actually check now CP20, CP20, generally people won't really be buying these things because obviously you're out level and yeah, you would be better off just literally deconstructing them, getting the materials, up, upping your... Um, crafting skills and then once you hit CP160 and you start getting the CP160 drops um, you'd be better off there with that. So this is just an example of how much junk or deconstructed items I really needed. Now to run you down through how I managed to achieve that uh, through several custom rules I'll once again go through the backpack, the items, go to deconstruct, edit and here you can see my rules. <laughs> now there are several because there are several different matches that I need to account for. So first of all, we're saying the whatever we're filtering, the type has to be either armor or weapon. And it must not be reserved for research, meaning there shouldn't be a trait on it that we can research. Then we need to ensure it's not in a set, meaning set items, you know, like Molo Kenna or whatever else. And that the CP uh, is less than or equal to 160 and not of the equipment type neck or ring because unfortunately armor also matches neck and ring and you don't want you know necklaces and rings to show up under your deconstruction tab when obviously they can't be destructed uh, deconstructed sorry and then we I use um, I'm gonna read this right now always read it wrong <laughs> doesn't show up here. Oh, whoops, I made a mistake there. I use Iconi's gear changer and what's really cool is that this um, mod is integrated with that. So you'd basically be able to Oh dear. What have I done here? Oh, hold on. In set. I think I was trying to do in set here. <laughs> I should definitely have backups of these. But anyway, so like I was saying, this and in set. Sorry, this should be and not in set. So what in set does is it checks for any of the slots that you have used with Icona's um, item changer. And if it detects that any of those slots are being used, it will automatically not filter or not categorize by that. And then what we're doing is just checking for the quality and as long as it's under legendary, which is five, that is obviously all detailed 
in the wiki. If you just go to uh, get quality, you'll see zero is trash, one normal, two magic, three arcane, four artifact, and five is legendary. So we're checking that as long as it's under that. Or if that doesn't match, because it won't. There may be other scenarios where we'd want it to be armor and weapon. Again, don't keep it for research. CP under 160, not a neck or ring, not in a set, but this time get the quality and as long as it's under arcane, then you know we can have that as deconstructed. And the reason why this is different is the previous one was a set item. Um, we're not checking for set items items and no arcane items right because these are for arcane items so not a set item up to arcane there's one match the next one what we're checking for is basically allow sets because we didn't specify not in set and under arcane so that means blue and under even if they sets because obviously you don't want to be handing out arcane sets that could be potentially useful and then you're deconstructing them. Um, then lastly, or under CP160, regardless of if it's in a set or not, up to arcane purple, um, we can dis uh, deconstruct that. And reason being is generally most people won't buy under CP160. It would generally be a waste. It would be rarely here and there if people are just using it to level up, but eventually they will out leveled. For examples like that I have um, my previous Julianeos um, item sets as you can see here which are at CP80. Um, I have Helm of the Fire which is at CP160 but because it matches the fact that it is a blue item um, we can deconstruct it because again that is useless to us specified in those rules. Um, and yeah researchables are pretty much the same in that aspect, you would just go to bag settings, find the researchable one, go edit, and you see here this is somewhat more simple. If it is researchable and the CP is under 160 and it's not part of a set and it is arcane or lower, we can mark that as research because we don't want to be researching set items. Else, if it's under CP or equal to CP 160, and it's under arcane, meaning blue and lower, then we can research that because, you know, we don't want to be researching set purple items. Else, if it's under CP160, we don't really care whatever it is. So long as it's not legendary, we'll go and we will um, research that. So as you can see, it's really powerful. I'm like literally just hitting the top of the surface on what I can really do. Um, I've added several more rules than what is in the base add-on. That's the whole point of it, as I've said. You know, you've got the base add-on, it's got full functionality. What you choose to do is completely up to you. For example, with the light armor set, how I achieved that was it has auto set, which is a category um, that does that automatically. So if I just go to auto set over here, you'll see auto generate set categories for each set gear that it finds. So what you can do is string that along to make it even more robust and powerful and you can be, like in my case, as long as the CP is greater than or equal to 160 and the quality is greater than or equal to arcane, meaning purple, and its armor type is light. Because obviously in my case I'm playing a magic sorcerer and I'm trying to maximize the um, light armor that I'm using for the passives. So this is super helpful for me and what it basically does is what you may have seen earlier. For example, Light Armor Set, Infernal Guardian, Light Armor Set, Magic of Furnace. So obviously if I had several more of these items, they would all be shown under here. So the helm would be here, the this would be here, the that would be here. That would all be neatly categorized. And then what I did to group the others, um, which was like medium and heavy, was basically just say as long as it's an armor and a weapon, it's not a neck or a ring, and its CP matches you know our specifications, and again the quality is arcane or greater, and armor type has to be heavy. And that will basically group everything together as that set item. And this is what it basically looks like. Heavy armor sets. So it's really nice, keeps things together, 
neatly organized and you can toggle it on and off whenever you like I've bound it to my home key so if I just hit the home key everything goes back to normal and I don't know about you guys but <laughs> it's just an absolute mess for me to work through this and I mean that's nothing compared to when if you actually go through a guild bank um, and then you know good luck trying to filter through all these armors and trying to find out what CP is what or is it good because remember you can specify things between certain CP brackets so you could say okay items between CP 10 and 30 categorize CP 10 to 30 whatever you can think of you can basically create those categories so like I said trying to go through this trying to find something how long would it really take you now with a push of a button activate the categories and I can literally see based on the rules that I've set what is in my case useful and what isn't so basically all of this is junk sell to vendor I've specified that anything under blue so all greens all whites all trash um, all of that and grays should just be sold immediately to the vendor they're not even worth deconstructing then we've got deconstructible so anything blue and up under legendary so yellow or gold um, you would basically deconstruct because that's generally worthwhile and you will get some um, decent mats especially on the CP levels I haven't really specified a CP level for deconstruction you can do that if you really wanted to um, and yeah researchables again if it can be researched it will be marked as such and then obviously the contrast between going from that to not having that <laughs> it's ridiculous I honestly couldn't see myself playing without the add-on so massive kudos to rocking dice um, honestly this is one of the essential add-ons to have anything that you could one categorize and I mean obviously this plays really well with other add-ons as you can see I'm using Folterit I'm also using Fcois I'm not sure you guys would pronounce that but that's what I call it and yeah it's super useful even for glyphs I remember I set these up so as you can see these are all marked for extraction and anything above CP 50 will just be marked as normal glyphs and gems and uh, there you can see so hopefully that's convinced you guys to check the add-on out you can find it easily on ESO UI just search for it under standalone add-ons bags, banks and inventory or if you're using minion just search for auto category and yeah check it out you know don't take my word for it don't take the video proof for it try it out see what you think about it see how the custom rules work be sure to obviously at the bottom of the add-on page check the auto categories wiki which will take you here um, which has everything defined for you you can also check out the become veteran section which basically runs step by step on how to make your own rules as well as custom rules of what you can you know basically achieve for example a necropotency um, if you wanted a simple match and it has specific traits of divine or infused like these are examples of what you can achieve and like I said it does integrate with other add-ons um, obviously if there are more and they don't work too well you can obviously bring that up with the author and it's obviously up to them if they want to do integration so yeah be sure to check it out and if you do and you have any comments or anything please let me know I'd love to help anyone else out who may or may not be struggling or simply wants to learn something new and figure out the power that is auto category cool